In today's video, I'm going to show you how I turned this plain window into this decorative glass window. Let's get started. So we begin with templates. We've taken some careful templates of the openings. Um, I'll make another video about how to make templates, but it's important to get the templates absolutely right before we start drawing the designs out full size. So we've taken individual templates for each of the tracery panels. So we're going to lay them out now. We have a template here. Uh, my colleague, John Greenaway, who helps me with a lot of my projects is brilliant at template taking. And he spent a day taking these templates. So we just work out the system to make sure that all the lines work together and the spacing is correct. So then using the paper template here or the cardboard template, we begin to draw the design out full size. And again, it's very important when you're dealing with something like a, a catrafoil like this, or quite a complicated shape that you get the uh, sizes right because there's very little um, allowance for error. If the, if the window is the wrong size, you'll see it straight away. Um, because it's a very simple geometric pattern, it shows up really quickly if it's not designed properly. So now that I've drawn it out in pencil, I am now drawing it out again in Sharpie. And the blue lines represent the heart of the lead. So I begin the cutting process. I'm using Lambert's Clear Rimi Glass. It's a beautiful antique glass and it's perfect for this project. Is it possible to make stained glass with no color? Yes, it's perfectly possible to make stained glass with no color. This is a, this is a great example just showing you um, the quality of the glass can actually carry the design with no color at all. So now I'm cutting out glass using a glass circular cutter like this. These are really handy pieces. And there's a couple of ways you can break the glass. You can either break it this way by simply tapping on the back and releasing the excess glass. But if you're less comfortable about doing that, there is a longer process, which is uh, you're less likely to cut yourself if you're not sure what you're doing. Generally speaking, I just do the first method that I've just shown you there. But if you score the glass and then you run along the score with the back of a glass cutter like this, you can actually cause the glass to fracture all the way around. Um, and it is a more controlled way of breaking the glass. You then turn the glass over and do the same thing on the other side, just applying pressure to release the circle from the surrounding glass. Um, and you can see here it just begins to crack uh, easily. So then we just uh, make a few little score lines, additional score lines to release the remaining pieces of glass. And we use our running pliers again. Again, it's a safe way of uh, breaking glass open uh, and revealing the uh, circular piece underneath. If you're not confident in breaking glass, this is a safer method. Uh, it's a slightly longer method, but it's just as uh, legitimate to break the circle using uh, the pressure method plus running pliers. So let's get into cutting our shapes out. You can see the blue lines, the sharpie lines, that represents the heart of the lead. And the important thing when cutting glass for leaded glass windows is that you allow a space between each piece of glass for the heart of the lead. So I'm now beginning to cut up this beautiful Lambert's Rimi antique glass. You can break glass by putting the glass cutter underneath the glass like that and just applying pressure on either side. It's a quick way of breaking glass. As you can see here, when you're looking closely at it, I'm cutting the glass to the inside of the blue line. That's allowing for the heart of the lead. You have to be quite accurate with your cutting. Um, so just take your time, apply equal pressure. Make sure the uh, wheel runs along the inside edge of the blue line. As you can see here, there's a little gap allowing for the heart of the lead. Cutting glass does take practice. Um, it, it looks as if it's a quick process, but you know, I've done the 10,000 hours and you do have to put a little bit of time in to just get that dexterity. 
um, but it does come after a period of time and glass cutting should be a pleasure and it should be something that doesn't take a massive amount of effort and energy. So now all the pieces are cut, we're putting the roundels in place, each of the four roundels. Again, this is just mainly clear glass. The central roundel is going to have a painted section. So how do we paint the central section? Well, we start with this little device here, something I got off of Amazon. I'll leave links in the description below this video where you can get it. It's basically a little electric turntable. It's a display table that's often used for jewelry and um, ceramics and things like that. And it's absolutely ideal for painting uh, tram lines on circular pieces of glass. If you've ever wondered how to create nice even lines around a piece of glass, this is one way to do it. So you can see here it's um, an electronic turntable, ideal for what we need it for. So we put our glass uh, template on top of the uh, uh, spinning disc. We make sure that our design is centralized so that it doesn't wobble. I'm now mixing up my black paint and this time I'm adding acetic acid, 20% acetic acid rather than water because I want the lines to flow really well from the brush. And if you mix uh, your paints with acetic acid, which is vinegar, it actually flows far better and we want the lines to flow. We want actually the lines to be quite long lines. So I'm using a rigger brush and very carefully lining up the rigger brush with the outside line and away we go. So some of the lines are slightly thicker than they need to be, but it's okay. You can always trim the uh, lines down. There's a little bit of a blob, as you can see there. But once the paint is dry, we can tidy up that blob and you end up with beautiful parallel lines. It takes a little bit of practice, but it is relatively straightforward. And again, you can see the acetic acid is allowing the paint to continue to flow from the brush. If I was just using water, the paint would dry and it would actually begin to take the paint back off the surface of the glass. Clear bridges are really useful things if you want to be able to see the design uh, through the bridge. Usually I use wooden bridges, but these um, plastic bridges are really useful. And again, I'll leave links in the description below where you can pick up these clear bridges they're really helpful if you're painting designs. So I started off doing my flower motifs with a brush and I actually wasn't very happy with it. I found the lines were too thick, so I redid them again with a dipping pen. And of course I forgot to film that part, but as you can see now the lines are drawn with a dipping pen. Uh, and I'm now going to add my enamel. So I'm putting a little bit of sticky back plastic over the design and I'm going to cut out the areas that I want to add my green enamel to. It's a lot easier if you actually cut out um, areas like this rather than painting areas and, and uh, scrubbing the enamel back off. It's a big waste of a lot of enamel. So uh, making a little mask like this out of clear sticky back plastic is a lot more convenient uh, and there's a lot less cleaning off to do afterwards. So I'm applying the enamel just with a soft hake brush or an applicator brush. Uh, just filling in the gaps and you can see the areas that uh, are covered with sticky back plastic are really not taking the paint so it's ideal. So once I'm happy that I've covered enough of enamel I use my badger brush just to try and even it out and just badger it down so it's nice and even and then I'm going to let that dry and then remove the sticky back plastic and put it into the kiln. So it's been fired and we're now ready to start letting up. So I'm starting with my first piece putting some uh, nails in the bottom area just holding my lead in place and then I begin the installation process. It's a little bit like making a jigsaw puzzle. So you just put lead, wrap lead around each piece of colored glass and take your time uh, and just make sure your lead lines follow the cartoon or the outline, the Sharpie outline, so that you know it's actually going to end up being the right size. Again, I'm taking a little Second check to make sure that it works with the templates and I know it's going to fit. We're ready to solder now. So I'm using a 6040 blowpipe solder uh, with some paste uh, as a flux rather than tallow candle. 
and I'm using that extractor unit to get away, get rid of all the harmful fumes. Very important. So now we're on site and John who took the templates is now helping me install it. We've removed the existing quarry glass and we're cleaning out um, the uh, stonework. And let's try fitting the first piece, make sure it fits well. As you can see, one of the sections, one of the leaves of the catrafoil has been removed to facilitate um, easy glazing. And then we install the final leaf in place after we know the rest of it fits well. So it should fit nice and snugly in position. Of course, there are no saddlebars holding this in place, so getting a nice snug fit is really important. As you can see, it's a good fit, so we move on to the next piece. But before we do that, we secure this one in place by drilling a few holes uh, and putting some stainless steel screws in just to make sure that the panel is well held in position. You can see the little screws there. So again, securing the window in place into the stonework is really important because in high winds, there's a lot of pressure on the glass, both internally and externally. So you have to be confident that the window is well secured in place. So the templates were proving to be well taken because all of the glass fits extremely well in place, which is what we want. We don't really want to be trimming any of the lead down. We want everything to fit in place first time. When you're using lime mortar, you have to make sure that the stonework is well wetted down before you use it. So this is a basic lime mortar mix, which has got dry riverbed sand in it and lime, slate lime and it's the traditional way of glazing into stonework, especially for conservation projects, using a small um, tool to push the uh, mortar in place and scraping back any excess, allowing it to dry out slightly before we brush it down and we make sure everything is clean just using a dry bristle brush like this. We make sure all of the work is done and here are the final pieces in place. And it's lovely to see a, a glazing scheme with very little color and it's having, it's coming to life really with the beautiful tree behind it. So stained glass can work really well with no color. It doesn't always have to be a rainbow of color. You can actually just use the quality and texture of the glass, the beautiful characteristics of handmade glass to make a beautiful display. If you like inspirational videos and tutorials all about stained glass, remember to subscribe to the channel. Leave comments for future videos. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.